Tom Pace here. Welcome to another few minutes of some wisdom, some experiences that I've had in my life. I wanted to share with you a couple of things. One is one of the things that I've come to learn is I don't have to believe my own thinking. Sometimes my mind tells me all the reasons not to take positive action. Sometimes my mind tells me that what's the use? Give up. Those are not the kind of thoughts that I want to think about. One of the things that I'm really impressed with all presidents of the United States is how they're able to compartmentalize their days. Just think, back when Bush got the notice that a plane had crashed into the Twin Towers. And he was at a school giving, doing some reading with some of the students, itty bitty kids in elementary school. And he was having a discussion with them, doing some reading. And a Secret Service agent walked up to him and, and told him that a plane had crashed into the Twin Towers. And he thought about it for a quick second. He said, okay. And then he went back to what he was doing. How could we do that? I wasn't able to do that myself once I heard about the, uh, the plane crashing into the Twin Towers. I was actually in Florida with my family. We were getting ready to go scuba diving. Uh, we were getting ready to get on the boat to go out. And then the second plane hit the second building. And that's when it was really difficult to, to, to defocus from that. But the guy I was with, he said, look, we've already paid to go scuba diving. We're in Florida. There's nothing we can do. Let's just go scuba diving. I didn't know if we were in World War III or not, but I went scuba diving, kind of uh, compartmentalized my, my hour or two hours. The rest of the week, I, like everybody else in the United States, I was focused on the television trying to find out what was going on. I, I had a lot of questions. But how do we compartmentalize? How do we take a positive situation or a negative situation and be able just to focus on that moment and then put it in a box, so to speak, and then move on to the next thing? If we're having a tough time at home with our spouse and we, we leave the house upset, we go to work, we're gonna t I take that with me. Luckily, my wife and I, we've got a great relationship. I rarely have ever have left the house in the morning mad at Leslie. Uh, we have a high level of trust and respect. In any relationship, I think it's really important to have a high level of trust and respect. I also heard that, you know, that obviously love should be unconditional. Well, I also, I believe that respect should be unconditional, that we should respect people for being people, not necessarily respect their behavior and not necessarily love their behavior. But we should always love people and we should always respect people, not their behavior. Thanks for watching this Tom Pace video. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe to this channel. Tom Pace is a multimillionaire and wants to share with you all his experience. Please leave a comment below this video. 25, 35 years ago, if you ask parents, what did they want for their children? And what most parents would say 25, 35 years ago is they would say they wanted their children to have integrity, to have good character, to have good judgment. Today, when you ask parents, what do you want your children to get? What do you want your children to be? And a lot of parents will say they want their children to be happy. Now, I believe in order to be happy, I need to have great character and I need to be working on worthwhile things. I need to be working. I believe that God wants us to work, not to be leisure all the time, but to work. And it's important what kind of work I'm doing. Am I doing work that glorifies God, that makes this world, this earth, a more loving, respectful place? Or am I just concerned about what it, what's in it for me? I, my philosophy is the more I give, the more I live. So trying to help other people to have better lives, that's my goal. To be a great listener, to have compassion. 
When I was in Washington, D.C. last week, we left our hotel. We were staying at the Capitol Hilton. It's a, the hotel is just a couple of blocks away from the White House, the Capitol Hilton, just a couple of blocks away from the White House. And Leslie and I and the girls, we were walking to dinner, and the, the street out in front of our hotel was about five lanes wide. And so the light would give you about 40 seconds to get across if you were walking across, which is ample time for the average person, but for a senior, it might not be enough time. And it was about 20 seconds into the, into the, the time, and there was a senior that was walking, and he was walking very slowly. It didn't look like he was going to get out of the street. And so I stopped, turned around, went back to him, and took his arm and kind of lifted him out of the street. I came to find out that he was living at the Capitol Hilton. He stays there for a month or two months. His name is Arthur, Arthur, you know. Uh, his name is Arthur, and he'd been living there. Now my wife, she thought that this gentleman I was helping across the street was a homeless person. I knew that he lived in the hotel, so obviously he wasn't homeless, and I knew that he probably had to have some kind of money to be able to do that because it's not that cheap of a hotel. I walked him to the pizza re restaurant. As we approached the pizza restaurant, we walked past a Starbucks, and there was a gentleman standing there. He had on uh, a business-type suit. He had a leather uh, briefcase. He had a nice haircut clean cut and he asked me would I buy him a cup of coffee at Starbucks I thought wow this is interesting he wants me to buy him a cup of coffee at Starbucks as I'm helping Arthur get to the pizza place I so I told the guy no I thought well that's crazy I felt like he maybe he's taking advantage of me I didn't understand so then I got Arthur to the pizza place and I turned around and I was going to get up to the intersection and there was the guy standing in front of Starbucks and I said, hey buddy, what kind of coffee do you want? He said, I just want a black cup of coffee. And I thought, yes, I'll come on in, let me get you a cup of coffee. Back in 2001, 2001, 2002, when I was going through my desert, when I was losing everything financially because I was in a class action lawsuit, Things were horrible going on in my life. I went to my barber and I said, I have a situation. I don't have enough money to pay you the $20 for this haircut today or, and be able to go pick up the food for dinner for my family tonight. Can you let me pay you next time I get a haircut? And he said, no, you need to pay me today. I was really hurt by this because I've been going to this guy for a long time. And so I went ahead and I paid him the $20. I don't remember how I got food for the family that night, but it wasn't easy, it was humiliating, whatever it was, he didn't extend me that, that credit. And he thought, because he's still my barber some 15, 16 years later, he's still my barber, but he thought I was joking. His perception was I was just joking, but I was serious. I needed him to give me credit for till the next haircut so I could pay him. When the guy at Starbucks asked for a cup of coffee, I mean, it only cost me a couple of dollars. But my perception was he was just, at the time, he was just a, a, a guy that was trying to take advantage of me. But then I thought, you know, I could just give. I could just give him a cup of coffee. I could do what he's asking me to do and let him be the deciding. Let him decide whether or not he's taking advantage of me or not. I just gave out of the kindness of my heart. That's why I gave him that money. And I also remember the situation with the barber. He could have just given me that $20 of credit. I mean, I was going to pay him, but he didn't do that. He thought of his own needs. A lot of time we think of our own needs, we think of our own rights before we think about other people. And so today I want to try to think about other people more than I think about myself. I want to think about God first. What can I do to glorify God? God is love. What can I do to glorify God? And what can I do to help other people? Whether it's just listening, whether it's giving them a, 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 a handout, giving them an opportunity, whatever I can do to help someone else. Think about that. Who are you going to help today? What are you gonna to do today to make this world a better place? 
please click the like button. Please subscribe if you're not a, a, a member yet to this channel. Please share this with other people. Thank you very much for tuning in today.